Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part 49 of my Java video tutorial series. Today, we're going to have another fun tutorial. Today, I'm going to show you how to implement a little brush set here, as well as set up the lines like we talked about before, draw ellipses, draw squares, and also as an added little feature here. We're, of course, going to still have the color changing there. We're also going to be able to set transparencies and do a ton of other different things. And on top of that, based off of everything I cover in this tutorial, you're pretty much going to be able to implement anything you could possibly ever imagine in a paint application. So let's get into the code. Now this is all the code from the previous tutorial and if you didn't watch it you absolutely should watch it because I explain all of this stuff in that tutorial. So that's part 48 and there's a link above. So let's just jump right in here. I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of things just so you will be able to extend this and all the code in this tutorial is available in a link underneath of the video. You can do whatever you want with it and if you can get somebody to buy it off you I don't care. Just do whatever you want. Okay so I'm going to be throwing my own events this time just to show you a neat way to do that so I'm gonna have to bring in a couple other different libraries here and there you go another thing I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be implementing that little transparency little slider that you saw there previously if you can't see this view at full screen to make sure that the float that I use to define the transparency is always two decimals I'm going to use the decimal format library as well and to get rid of this little error message that I have here I'm going to suppress warnings for serial because that's kind of aggravating and like I said in the past serials just used so that you could have backwards compatibility whenever you are creating other different classes so we saw a slider there so we're gonna create a transparent slider it's gonna allow the person on the fly to change the transparency and I'm also gonna need a J label for that that's gonna automatically dynamically update so there's that and I might as well just come in here and also define my desktop formatting and that is like I said before just to make sure that the transparency has two digits so I'm just gonna go new and decimal format and I'm gonna be covering a ton of things here basically reviewing now if you want to make sure that it only has one digit and two decimal places that's exactly how you do that and we're gonna be using that a little bit later so when we're formatting everything to come out on the screen and another thing is I don't need to do this but I'm doing this because you guys always ask me for homework so I'm going to give you some homework I'm gonna take the graphics settings that I have here that I created previously and put them outside of this class just to show you how to do that. And one thing I didn't implement on purpose was a stroke tool so that you could change the stroke. Basically all you need to know, this is the magic method based and then using all the other techniques I showed below, you should be able to use this method here to dynamically change your stroke, right like that. So if you wanted to dynamically change your stroke to five, pixels wide this is the guy that you would use but I don't need that in this tutorial just remember there's homework if you want it and I'm also going to come down here and go float and create my transparent value holder and it's going to be a float so that means you have to end it with an F those all work with floats and we can scroll down through here let's say I want to make this window a little bit wider I'm gonna change it to 800 by 600 there you go of course you know how to do that and then we need to actually add our transparent little tools that we had so I'm just gonna keep scrolling down until I get to this part right here and I'm gonna start adding some things here so if I want to put in a transparent label well I'm just gonna go trans label is equal to new J label like that and then I just need to define exactly what I want it to say inside of there and you can have it say whatever you want like I said I'm gonna dynamically change that later on and I'm gonna set it at negative or no transparency just to start off with so I'm gonna leave that as one then I'm gonna go transparent I gotta create my slider and if I want to do that I just go J slider see I said I'd be reviewing a whole bunch of things if I want the minimum value to be one maximum 100 you just put 99 inside of there and then 99 is gonna be my maximum actually 100 or a one transparency or no transparency is gonna be the default and then I need to create a listener so that whenever this slider is touched it's going to automatically go in there and make changes listener for slider I'm gonna go L for slider I'm defining my own class here that's gonna handle all this and go new listen for slider right like that and of course I'm gonna need to go create that class which I'm gonna do here in one second and then I'm gonna go trans slider and go add change listener and then L for slider like I've covered in previous tutorials that is going to allow me to do dynamic things with this slider and then before I leave to go create that class I'm gonna come in here 
and add these two new guys to my box for my layout. So let's file save that, and then I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the screen and add in this class, Listen for Slider. Well, here I am at the very, very bottom of this guy, and I'm going to create private class, Listen for Slider, and then you need to call Implements change listener. And this is just going to implement the action listener so that it can react to events on that slider component. That's all this is going to do, which is a lot, I guess. Kind of cool. We'll see how it happens. And then I'm going to go public void state changed. So that means every single time the slider is changed, go change event E. So every time the slider is touched or changed in any way, this method right here is going to be called. So that's what's going on with that. And then I'm just going to double check that the source that called this actually came from trans slider, my slider, because I don't want to react to any other events. And if it did, I want to go trans label. I want to change the text for the label. And I just do that with set text. And I'm going to change it to transparent, right like this. And then go plus. And then I'm going to use my decimal format that I talked about before. Let's scroll up here just so you know. This guy right here, decimal format, remember, DEC. I'm going to be using this guy. Okay, so let's get in there. Jump down to the next line so it's a little bit easier to see. I'm going to go DEC and format and trans slider. And then I'm going to say I want to get the value for trans slider, whatever it is, whatever they set it to. And then since I want it to show up as either one or less being a percentage of transparency, I'm going to multiply that times 0.01, right like that. That's just going to move the decimal place over two. And then what I need to do is set the value for transparency for every shape that's drawn thereafter. So I'll just go transparent value, and I'm going to need to change this into a float because that's what the transparency function uses. And then I'm going to go trans slider get value like this, and then we're going to multiply this times 0.01 again because we want to move the decimal place over. And there you go. You just implemented a custom class that's going to catch any events triggered on your slider. Pretty cool. And before I leave, make sure you put two equal signs in there. Now we're going to jump up and create our new array list that's going to hold my transparency values. So jump way up here to this array list. We're going to create a new array list. Array list. And this guy is going to hold a float, but you're not allowed to use primitives inside of here. So you have to go F-L-O-A-T like that. Primitive would be lowercase float. And I'm going to call this trans percent. And then just go equal to new array list and float again. And there you go. So that's going to allow me to store all the changing transparency values for each shape that's drawn on the screen. Well, then what I need to do, because I'm going to be doing some funky stuff with the brush, is I need to come down inside of drawing board. And we're going to be doing different things based off of if I'm trying to draw the brush shape or I'm trying to draw a regular shape shape. So right before this guy right here, I'm going to go if current action. And if you're having a hard time understanding exactly what's going on, it's probably because the last tutorial isn't fresh in your mind, so feel free to watch it again. So what I'm going to do is say, if I don't have the brush currently selected, which is this guy right here, this is the brush. See how I draw? What I'm actually doing here is I'm drawing individual ellipses to create this brush effect. So if this is not selected, but all these other things are, I want to do the same thing that I've done in the past. And then right after this repaint, I'm just going to close off this if statement just like that, no problem. And then I'm going to copy this because I'm basically going to do this again. Scroll down into mouse released right inside of here and paste this guy here. And then I'm going to do a couple different things because remember, I'm going to be drawing more than just rectangles this time. So I'm going to go shape A, shape is equal to null. I'm going to nullify the shapes. And then what I'm going to do is react differently based off of what the current value of current action is. So I'm going to say if the current action is equal to, I'm going to change this to two, and then I'm going to perform a couple different things here. I'm going to go a shape is equal to, and I have a special method for draw line, which you're going to see here in a minute. I'm going to go and send it the starting X value, draw start, the starting Y value whenever they first clicked. And then I'm also going to send over, get the very last value for X and get the last value triggered for Y. Then I'm gonna go else, and I'm gonna go if, actually paste that in there, equal to, and I'm gonna change this to three. Then we're basically gonna do exactly the same thing again. So I'm gonna copy this, save myself some time, paste that in there, and this is gonna be also a shape, but in this situation, I'm gonna be drawing an ellipse. 
So I'm going to create the ellipse method here. However, I'm going to be passing it exactly the same values. And then I'm going to go else if current action is equal to four. And in this situation, I'm going to be using the draw rectangle. So I'm just going to cut that out of there and paste that in there. And then this stuff is going to say pretty much the same here exactly. So here we're going to be adding our new shape to our shape array list. We're going to be adding our new fill, our new stroke. However, there's one thing that is also new, and what is that? It is the transparency. Remember, every shape now has a transparent value. So I'm going to change this to trans percent, which is the name for the array list that holds all of the transparent values. And then I'm going to actually give it that float, which is going to be saved inside of the array list. And then this will all stay exactly the same way that it is. And then down here inside of this guy, this is where we're going to be creating our brush. So I'm just going to get rid of some of this stuff. Actually, I'm going to get rid of all this. So I have a little bit of room here to work. And then I'm going to say if current action is equal to one. So I'm going to handle for my brush. And then I'm going to go int value for x is equal to e dot get the last value triggered for x as the mouse was dragged, as this method is saying right here. Copy that out of there. Paste that in there. And then I'm also going to do exactly the same thing for y. And there we got that. And then I also don't want to forget to set my shape back equal to null. So I'll get that out of the way. And I also want to make sure that my stroke value and my fill color are the same whenever I am drawing with the brush. Otherwise, if the stroke is different than the fill, because I'm going to be drawing a bunch of ellipses to kind of make it look like it's a brush, if there's a different stroke on the outside, it's just going to look weird. So I'm going to Get that in there and make that look good. And then I'm going to go a shape, create a new shape here and call draw brush and then pass over to it X and Y. And then I'm just going to put in five inside of here. You could, of course, change that. And this is just going to be the height and the width for each of the ellipses that are going to be drawn, as you're going to see here below. And then I'm going to come in and go shape dot add a shape. What the heck? Scroll up here and grab that stuff so I don't have to type it out. Copy all that paste that in there. And everything else here can remain exactly the same. So let's keep scrolling through here. And you see this, remember I defined this already very early in the tutorial so I can get rid of that. And I'm going to show you here in a second all the methods involved in printing out all the shapes and all that stuff out to the screen. And this guy is going to actually have to change here, but I'm also now going to have to iterate not only through stroke colors, fill colors, and shapes, but I'm also going to have to iterate through my transparencies. This is real simple, just changes to float. And then I'm going to call this trans counter. And then this is going to be trans percent because that's the name for my array list that holds all that information. And then this guy is basically going to get moved from here down inside of this, this four block that's going to set everything up for me real nice. So paste in the transparency in this situation, get rid of that because it no longer applies. And then down here where I originally had the float, I'm going to change this to trans counter dot next. I'm going to grab the transparency for the shape on the fly. Most of these other things are not going to change until we get right here because remember I'm not just drawing rectangles. I'm going to change shape back into a null value right like that. Scroll this up so you can see it. And then I'm going to perform different actions based off of what the current value for current action is, which means what type of shape does the user want me to shoot onto the screen. I'm going to go a shape, create my shape, call draw line. And then this guy is going to be basically the same as what we had up there above. Let's just scroll up and grab it and bounce down here and paste all that inside of there. Come back up here and make sure I got this all set right. And it looks right. Okay, so current value, if it's two, I want to draw a line because that's the way I had everything set up. Except in this situation, I'm going to be passing draw end instead of these guys right here, which I had saved previously from the last tutorial. So this is going to be draw end, and this is going to be draw end, because I have those saved. Else, and everything else is going to also be that way. So I'm going to copy that, and whenever I draw this ellipse right here, I'm also going to pass the ending values. And then for this guy, when I draw this rectangle, I'm going to do the same thing for that. And then, of course, I'm going to need to get rid of this all together because I handle that above. And then that's all perfect. And then I created the draw rectangle last time, and it all works perfectly this time. And the ellipse, which I also drew in exactly the same way we drew the rectangle, except I'm passing back an ellipse instead of passing back a rectangle. That all looks really cool. So that means the only other thing I need to do is handle drawing lines. So I'm going to go private line 2D dot float. 
because that's the value you pass whenever you're drawing a line, or at least the line that I'm currently drawing. And then it's going to be using the same thing we got here. So I'll just copy that, paste that inside of there. And then in this situation, whenever you want to draw a line, we're just going to go return new. And then we're going to be passing back this value because, of course, that's what it has there. Bounce that inside of there. And then we're going to be passing x1, y1, x2, y2. And then close that off. And then we're going to have to handle drawing in our brushes and add a ton of flexibility for you to do all kinds of things. I'm going to have the brush actually be drawn using an ellipse, a whole bunch of ellipses. And the name of this guy is Draw Brush. And it's going to get past an integer, x1, integer y1, another integer that I'm going to call Brush Stroke Width. Remember those were five as they were being passed. Brush Stroke Height. You could easily go in there and change those. And then in this situation, we're going to return new ellipse to D float like that. And then it's just going to be X1, Y1, and then brush stroke width, which we're just going to copy here because it's too much to type like that. And then get rid of this integer that's right there. And that's what we're going to be returning right there. And there you go. There's a whole program. And there you go. If we file save it and run it, I hope Hopefully it's going to work here. And there it does. And there's your paint application. You can see it sounds kind of complicated, but it's just a matter of putting all the pieces together to get this guy to work. Go download the code, play with it, do whatever you want with it. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.